Hey Tiger fans, don't forget that Massillon City School District has a renewal levy on the ballot Tuesday, November 7th. Issue 31 is not a new tax and will not increase taxes. It was first passed by voters in 1999 and has been renewed every five years. Issue 31 will help our district maintain current operations and programming. And always, go Tigers! Hi, and welcome to another edition of The Nate Moore Show. Our show is brought to you each week by Reliable Heating and Cooling. I'm your host, Dave Sheets. Joining me is the head coach of the Maslin Tigers, Nate Moore. Coach, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. Mission accomplished last Friday night as the Tigers knocked off Central Crossing from Grove City 41-6 to in the opening round of the Division II playoffs. Coach, what pleased you the most about that win last week? I mean, playoffs is, is all about just win and, and, and move on. So just getting the win, you know, that's what it's all about at this point of the season. It was another fast start for your offense as that group scored the first four times it had the ball. Quarterback Dewan Owens threw for 347 yards and four touchdowns. Was that kind of the plan to hit their defense with a heavy dose of the passing game or did it just kind of work out that way? Uh, it really just worked out that way. Um, we were we were getting loaded boxes. Uh, you know, you can only block so many guys, and, mm -hmm. um, and so the answer there is to throw it. So, you know, our, our guys executed that. So, that's what happened. Your offense had two receivers finish with 100 yards plus receiving. Tell us more about what goes into the timing of the passing game between the quarterback and the receiver. It really is just reps. You know repetitions, um, and and the more you do anything, the better you get at it. And um, you know, over the course of the season, the, the guys are getting uh, uh, better and better what they're doing. But also, it, it's you know it's a result of, like I said, what we were getting out of, the, out of their defense. So you know when you have a loaded box, you're gonna have one-on-one -on -one opportunities on the outside, and um, you know you want to be in the position where you can win one-on-one -on -one opportunities. You know, if, if, you, if you have a loaded box and you can't win one-on-ones, it's going to be a long day. <laughs> the Tiger defense is giving up an average of just eight points a game. When the team is expected to dominate an opponent like this past week, how does that group kind of motivate themselves to play well? They, they set really high expectations. Um, you know, they, they, they know they're good. They're very confident. Um, and so they, they, set, they set really, really high goals um, and go after them. Linebacker Dorian Pringle led the way with nine tackles last week, including three tackles for loss. What makes Dorian so special playing from that inside linebacker spot? He's very instinctive, um, reads his keys very well, um, and, and um, you know you have to give some amount of credit to Spencer Lean, our inside backers coach, does a great job with those guys. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, reads his keys really, really well. Um, like I said, very instinctual. Um, he's, he's a true blue football player, um, and then he, he's, he's really, really strong and um, has, has great speed also for his position. So um, you put all those things together, you're going to have a good player. All right. In a moment, we'll talk with a Tiger player, but first this word from Reliable Heating and Cooling. There was a time when 10 miles to the gallon was acceptable. Today's 40-plus mile-per-gallon cars weren't even in the rearview mirror back then. Of course, this Linux air conditioner wasn't on the radar either. It's solar ready, the quietest, most energy efficient air conditioner you can own. It's time to live in the now. Call Reliable Heating and Cooling for the most advanced technology in heating and air conditioning. When you're ready to live in the now, call Reliable Heating and Cooling. Linux, innovation never felt so good. Thank you, Reliable Heating and Cooling. Joining us now is senior defensive back, Zach Liebler. Zach, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me. First of all, congratulations on the win last week against Central Crossing. Your defense had another terrific game, holding the Comets to just one score, and that was on a short field after a blocked punt. 
From your perspective, what did the defense do well in shutting down Central Crossing's offense? Uh, I think our defense played really, uh, really well with like gap sound and stuff, and you know, just playing our scheme to the best of what we can. And you know, all 11 players are doing their one job, and I feel like you know, putting the trust in the other 10 that they're going to do their job as best they can. It, uh, it it makes our defense really, really good. The Maslin Tigers, as you know, are used to making long playoff runs each year. How do the coaches mix up your practices at this time of the year so you guys uh, stay engaged? Well, I know uh, some practices are uh, a little uh, less physical and more mentally. Mm -hmm. um, we spend a little more time on uh, recovery and stuff like that, making sure the players are, you know, healthy enough to play Friday nights and stuff. But, yeah, just not trying to overload us with reps and, yeah. What's your favorite part about playing for the Maslin Tigers? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, I got a lot, but I'll say my favorite part is uh, is definitely running out that tunnel week one. The stadium's packed, mm -hmm. and it the the feeling is just it's it's unbelievable. That's yeah. Hard to describe. Yeah, it is. After high school, what are your plans as far as uh, more education and or hoping to continue your college football career? Yeah, I would love to continue uh, playing football at the next level. Uh, my main focus is just uh, getting as much as, uh, money off as I can. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'll, I'll go to whatever college gives me the most money and is, you know, suits me the best for my engineering degree and stuff. But, yeah, I would, would definitely love to play uh football at the next level. Okay. And finally, the Tigers play Westerville South in a second round playoff game this Friday night. What can you tell us about their team and especially their offense? Uh, yeah, they got a pretty solid squad, uh, pretty good athletes. I'd say their offense, it's pretty balanced with run and pass. Uh, they, they got some really lengthy receivers, like 6'7 and 6'3. Hmm. Uh, decent speed, but um, I don't think they'll do well against our defense. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, thanks a lot, Zach. Yep, thank you. Coach Moore will rejoin us on the Nate Moore Show after this timeout. And welcome back to the Nate Moore Show. Coach, we just heard from senior defensive back Zach Liebler. What are some of the things you like most about Zach's skill set and how that overall secondary has meshed so well? Um, I mean, Zach, he's, he's got great speed um, and, and great toughness. Um, and um, um, he's quick as well as fast. Mm -hmm. um, he's very twitchy. Um, very smart player, very cerebral out there, and, and uh, you know he's played a lot of reps for us over the last three years. So, mm -hmm. um, you know that's 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 it's to be expected with, with the amount of experience that he has. And um, but I, I think the number one thing would be toughness. I mean, he's he's he's, he's uh, he plays a position where you know toughness is not necessarily something that that you normally lead with. Um, mm -hmm. He's a great tackler out there. He's, he's very physical with, with receivers. Very, very technique sound, technique solid, and um, and he's he's a tough kid out there, man, in that corner position. You have plenty of former players who have played or are currently playing college football. In what ways are you able to assist your players when it comes to recruiting and helping them pick a school? I mean, it really comes down to having a chance to be evaluated. Um, you know, some guys are, are, are good enough or check enough boxes. Some guys don't. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's that's the college coach's decisions to make. Um, you know, what 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 I think you can ask of a head coach is to is to help provide opportunities for guys to be evaluated. So create connections with, with college coaches. Um, make sure that they know about our guys. Make sure they have a chance to review the film. Make sure that it gets passed up through the recruiting departments and the position coaches and coordinators and 
head coach eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, I think as a player, that, that's all you can ask for is, is, is to be evaluated. Um, and, and so, um, you know, if, if you are a guy, great. If you're not, at, at, at least it's not because, well, nobody knew about me. Um, so, you know, our guys play at, at Maslin. This is, you know, one of the premier high schools for high school football in the country. Um, and, uh, you know, provides great opportunities for our guys for evaluation. The Tigers will host a Division II second round playoff game this Friday night at Paul Brown Tiger Stadium. Kickoff is at 7. Your opponent this week is Westerville South. What can you tell us about their program and the season they've put together so far? Well, this will be the third time we've played them, so there's, there's some familiarity as far as Region 7 goes. Mm-hmm. Um, they're a good football team. Um, seven wins, four losses. Um, uh, more talented at the skill positions. Um, the running back actually played a little bit against us back in 2021. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a senior now, really good player. Um, has a burst, hard runner, breaks tackles. Um, so he's a really good player. Then, then they've got a three-year starter at quarterback um, who uh, it, it, also a good player, can run it, um, throws a good deep ball. A um, little, little inconsistent, but but does make some good throws, and um, and and they've got some um, some really talented receivers as well, including a six seven guy, wow. um, a six three guy, um, so they've got some weapons. Scheme wise and formation wise, offensively, what will you see? Ten eleven personnel with some empty, you know, so your garden variety general offense that, that you really see these days. Um, pretty balanced as far as run and pass. Okay. And then defensively, uh, formation wise, and does anybody specifically jump off the screen? Uh, defensively, they're an odd front, 3 4, uh, a lot of man coverage, cover zero, cover one. Um, and then I, I think their, their safeties are good. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's six and nine, um, both good players. Um, and the, the corners also, especially number two. Mm-hmm. So the, the strength of their defense is in the back half. Um, that's it? That's it. <laughs> All right. Coach, thanks for your time again this week. I want to thank Coach Moore and senior defensive back Zach Liebler for joining us on the show this week. The Nate Moore Show brought to you all season long by Reliable Heating and Cooling. I'm your host, Dave Sheets. Thank you for watching. And as always, go Tigers. Hey Tiger fans, don't forget that Maslin City School District has a renewal levy on the ballot Tuesday, November 7th. Issue 31 is not a new tax and will not increase taxes. It was first passed by voters in 1999 and has been renewed every five years. Issue 31 will help our district maintain current operations and programming. And always, go Tigers! and welcome to the Stark County Humane Society. Today we're going to give you a few pointers when considering adopting a new furry friend. All animals here at the Stark County Humane Society are spayed, neutered, microchipped, vaccinated, dewormed, and if old enough, heartworm tested for our canine friends. Adopters will receive a free exam within two weeks of adoption at local veterinarian hospitals. We encourage all adopters to take full advantage of this. A one-time adoption fee is required for your new furry friend. When you adopt, you get an awesome adoption packet that includes treats for your new fur baby and savings for you. But this is not where the cost of adoption stops. Did you know the average cost of an animal like a new puppy or kitten can cost up to $500 annually? This includes annual veterinary visits, preventative care, and everyday supplies like crate, litter, food, toys. But I hope this doesn't scare you away. Adopting an animal is a huge responsibility and a commitment. Please take the time to consider the cost of adopting a new pet into your family today. I hope to see you soon at the Stark County Humane Society. Please visit our website or visit us on social media for more information.
Welcome to the final edition of Swing for this year. Our show features Tiger Swing Band director Jason Neal. We're on air with you every Wednesday night following the Nate Moore Show. Swing is being brought to you by Johnny's Music Shop. I'm your host, Claire Palmer, and with me is Mr. Neal. Welcome to the show, Mr. Neal. Thanks for having me, Claire. Our Tiger football team won its first playoff game last Friday night, and your band played at halftime of that game. Describe that performance for us. Well, at halftime, it was... Uh Nice to get to see the visiting band. Um, we don't, we haven't always had a visiting band this season, so it was nice to to be the second band during halftime. And um, I thought our kids did a good job. We, uh, you know, we've started repeating s s material that we've learned and, and done throughout the season. And uh, obviously, we chose our Batman and uh, big noise from Winnetka. A little shout out to our alumni show. And uh, I thought the kids did a great job with their Inner Sandman. They, they. They've enjoyed the, the drum break and dance part of that show. So I, I was very pleased with the performance. And um, I think the crowd responded very positively to, to our students. I think it was nice to, to get a good reaction. Um, it, it felt to me like the crowd was really showing their appreciation for all that the band's done this year. As this current marching band season slowly draws to a close, what were two or three of the biggest challenges you faced as the band director this season? Well, this season had some very unique moments. Um, the biggest thing I would say was, you know, we lost the armory, which is where we've done our, you know, um, the bulk of our work for the, the entire time that I've been here. Uh, and even before I was here, you know, the band was using the armory kind of as their home, place of storage, place of, uh, you know, where we would inspect the band before the games, keep the uniforms. And so making the transition from that location to the high school here and we've gotten some new rooms within WHS to store our percussion equipment, to store our uniforms and our, all of our booster um, supplies and things and so we had to really rethink how we did every single thing of our program. So it was a it was an interesting year. We had to adjust and adapt to a lot of a lot of challenges. Um, I'd say another big challenge was you know Every single day, we, we were sharing fields with the football team. So if you know they're in the stadium, we're in the indoor field, and, and vice versa. So uh, that was a challenge. But I, I was really impressed with how the kids uh, flowed with the things, and, and just um, they, they did adjust well to all the new things that we did, and just you know how the beginning of the game looked, and how getting out of the school over to the stadium, you know, everything was different. So I'd say that was a big challenge, but I was uh, pleased with how we overcame that challenge. What role does technology play in your teaching and rehearsal process? Well, I think the biggest thing is, you know, everybody's got a, a tuner and a metronome on their phone. And, and so uh, we, we use that a lot. I mean, I use my tuner and metronome as I'm teaching often to help the kids find the pitches, whether in tune or not, uh, find the beat, how are we um, feeling the beat together, subdividing those beats. Um, when, when I was in high school, you know, very few people had a tuner or a metronome that they could use, but now everyone's got one and, you know, so they can stick it right on their stand as they're performing. Um, we'll also make, you know, real-time recordings of the band where we can record a rehearsal and then play that recording when we're out on the field and learn the show to, to themselves hearing the music that they performed. Um, so I think that's extremely helpful. We use that all the time and you know, just having an iPhone that can do all these things. And um, I will say that the teleproductions department here at Washington High School has been very, very kind to get us the recordings of our, of our halftime shows and pregame shows so we can watch and evaluate our performances and learn from those. So um, I'd say we use technology a lot and uh, if you know it can be a great great tool for the kids. If you could have chosen any other career path besides being a band director, what would it be? That's a great question. Um, when I was growing up I was uh, always wanting to be a, a movie director like in Hollywood and uh, my family uh, my cousins and I, we would make movies and stuff like that, and I would direct these things. And I, you know, even have written 
written some movies and done some soundtracks for some of these things. So at one point I was ready to go uh, direct movies, but once I got into student teaching and, and I got with the kids and making music in, in the schools, um, I knew that that was the, the path I wanted to follow. So great question and I knew I guess I was going to direct something. We'll have more with Mr. Neal here on Swing, but first, this word from Johnny's Music Shop. Band season starts here at Johnny's Music Shop, located at 2492 Lincoln Way East, Maslin, Ohio. Enjoy our name brand band instrument rentals with no credit checks, and our large selection of woodwind, brass, string, percussion accessories, and band books. Get signed up today for private lessons with any of our knowledgeable instructors, and if you're in need of a fix, all repairs are done here locally in-house. Give us a call at 330-832-3000 and come be a part of our musical family. Thank you, Johnny's Music Shop, and welcome back to Swing. What strategies do you use to try and recruit new band members each school year? Well, I've always had the philosophy that if uh, the bands are successful and the kids feel successful when they're um, performing and learning, they'll want to come back and they'll want to, they'll want to be part of something that's uh, fun and successful and um, it's interesting that you say that because I've, I've gotten I've had about five students this year already come to me who are not in band who are current high school students asking about how they can join band so um, I think you know I think and hope they're seeing that what we're doing out there is fun and it looks like you know they're hearing from their friends that hey this is a this is a great thing to be a part of. So um, if you're successful and, and having a good time, I think people are going to want to be part of that. Um, as far as like actively recruiting, I think sometimes it's word of mouth where students are, are telling you know, their friends about it. Um, but we really go at the junior high level is when we try to do the most active recruiting. I know our fourth grade and fifth grade general music classes our, our, our directors who are in the middle school um, do a lot of talking to the students and trying to identify who would be, you know, A, good at this and, and B, would really enjoy it. And, you know, we go and try to have conversations with those students and, and get them to um, consider band. And then for me, actively, I go down to the eighth grade band every single day and um, I want to help them learn their instrument. I want to help them learn to read music better so that they feel that success and they want to continue on in the program into the high school. So I look at every single afternoon that I go to the junior high as a, as a recruiting trip, if you will. So, What are your long-term goals for the growth and development of the band program here at WHS? I'd say, um, you know, we're always trying to grow the quality and the quantity of the band. And given the choice, I would take quality over quantity. So how can we help students be better musicians? And you know, my goal is to be preparing students to play even more difficult music than we're playing right now. So, uh, and that's a, that's a fifth through 12th grade process. And the stronger we can make our middle school program and the more continuity we can have through those grades, the better they're going to be by the time they get to be juniors and seniors. and um, So those are my biggest goals, is to always be pushing the difficulty of our music and the musicianship of what the kids are able to do. Um, but that being said, you know, the, the question I get asked more than any other as the band director in this town when people see me is, how big is the band going to be next year? Because everybody wants to see a nice big Maslin Tiger swing band on the field, and, and so do we. Um, so if we can increase the quality of the student and the music, then we can increase the numbers and get more people excited about being part of it. So I would never want to sacrifice the quality for a big band. I'd, I'd rather have a small band that's good than, than a large band that's, that's mediocre. So I would say quality and quantity would be the answer to your question. What does the band department's concert schedule look like for the upcoming holiday season? Well, let's see, we've got our junior high, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade band concerts going to be on December 6th. And then our high school band concert for the holidays is going to be here on December 14th. And that'll be the freshman 
concert band, the symphonic band, and the wind orchestra. And um, I can't remember the date off the top of my head, but the jazz orchestra is performing um, with the Washingtonians again this year for, for a holiday concert. So we're excited for those, those three concerts, and uh, that's what we're preparing for right now. And finally, tell me about the halftime show we'll see at this Friday night's home playoff game against Westerville South. All right, so um, we're going to rotate the middle song of our playoff show. So we've got different things happening each week. Um, so we're going to use Batman as our opener, very dynamic piece. We're going to use Enter Sandman as our closer. The kids love it. Sounds great. The, the drum break and the, the dance that they wrote and choreographed is is something we'd like to feature each week. Um, and then our middle song, we're going to feature our front rank, our majorettes and so forth, drum major, Obi. Um, and this week it's going to be a Twist and Shout and Shout, uh, part of our Wordle show. So um, we've got a lot of cool, fun songs in that Wordle medley that we'll be using throughout the playoffs as well. So that's going to be our final home game for the season. Thanks, Mr. Neal. That will do it for the final edition of Swing for this year. Once again, Swing has been brought to you each week by Johnny's Music Shop. For Mr. Neal, I'm your host, Claire Palmer. Thanks for watching, and as always, go Tigers. Hey, Tiger fans, don't forget that Massillon City School District has a renewal levy on the ballot Tuesday, November 7th. Issue 31 is not a new tax and will not increase taxes. It was first passed by voters in 1999 and has been renewed every five years. Issue 31 will help our district maintain current operations and programming. And always, go Tigers! Most of us are engaged with the internet in one way or another every day. A fast, secure connection matters. It keeps us entertained informed, engaged. MCTV cares about keeping you engaged, no matter what's thrown your way. Need an upgrade? Choose from a range of reliable options, including whole home Wi-Fi. MCTV, we go the extra smile.